Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Zoom. Now, during this current kind of stage we're in right now with the virus and everything like that, a lot more people are working at home and a lot more people are using applications like Zoom. Now, Zoom is a way for you to kind of watch video conferences or to show your webcam and stuff like that. And a lot of employees are currently using it right now. However, a lot of people might not know that Zoom is not only serving you as some kind of way to watch other people, and it's, but it's also actually watching you and to in a crazy extent. So it's kind of circulating on the websites right now about how dangerous Zoom is. Apparently, it carries a lot of privacy risks which sort of makes sense because it is kind of a free application. Um, right now, Zoom is actually getting so popular because so many people are working from home that its stock has actually gone up quite a bit. It's at $141 right now. And if we look at it from one month ago, you know, it's gone up 40 bucks, uh, maybe like 40%. Which is quite a lot so as zoom has gained more attention and had its stock go up it's also received more negative attention mostly from privacy advocates saying that zoom is pretty much breathing down your neck and it has a very sketchy privacy policy and that's very true according to zoom's privacy policy they can collect but not limit themselves to your physical address your phone number job title credit and debit card information your facebook account your ip address your operating system and device details and more yikes that would be a zero out of zero for a vpn privacy policy for sure and Zoom doesn't really want to say that it sells your data, but it admittedly does admit that it does sell your data to, uh, I guess, improve your advertising experience. So by collecting your data, it's going to be able to sell that data to other companies, which are going to be able to target you ads, which I guess is improving your advertising experience, but it's not something you really want. Now, unless you're in California and you're in the United States, you don't really have the ability to ask zoom for which information it has about you so pretty much anyone outside california and the united states doesn't have the ability to ask information from zoom so zoom itself gives the administrator full power to track att att attendees uh, when the indicator that points out when a participant doesn't have the app in focus so it kind of makes sense that it has some of these tools to track you and monitor you and it looks like they might be using this to make money i mean after all the application is free so it, it makes sense right now apparently organizations like epic have explicitly criticized zoom making complaints to the federal trade commission note noting that it bypasses browser security and gives access to users webcam without even uh, consenting or giving their knowledge of doing so. So what can you really do to prevent Zoom from tracking you? Well, simply just don't use it. Fortunately, there are a couple other alternatives out there that have much better privacy policies. Stuff like Jitsi Meet is a pretty good open source alternative to Zoom. This guy says right here, I've tried Jitsi Meet and found it to be smooth. During a hangout call with a group of eight friends, I introduced it as an alternative user experience comparison. Onboarding with Jitsi, you click a URL, no accounts needed. Hangouts, you need a Google account, need to individually invite other Google accounts. Video quality, Jitsi is decent, slightly better than Hangouts even. Hangouts, passable but grainy. Video layout, Jitsi automatically big screens current speaker. Notes, so small screen of others. Uh, friends, preferred Hangouts. So it seems like with this guy, admittedly Jitsi is better and his friends thought it was better, but for some reason they still wanted to use Hangouts. So this is kind of like a problem with these applications, right? And stuff like Zoom, it has the name kind of credibility. Stuff like Google Hangouts, it has the name credibility. So people just are more inclined to use it. But stuff like Jitsi Meet could be a really good option, especially if you're looking to try something new and other people could be down to try it. Not only that, but stuff like Whereby is also a good option. Apparently the developer of Monero also hates Zoom and he has turned to be using Whereby for video conferencing and stuff like that. It's supposed to be pretty easy to use and good as well. It also has a free um, plan here with one user and one meeting room. So for people for more like businesses, of course you have these other plans. So that's also another option. So overall, it's kind of interesting to see kind of uh, the increase in using these applications, especially if people are telecommuting and re remote working from home. And it's not surprising that one of the biggest ones out there, Zoom, has a bad privacy policy. It collects too much stuff on you when you're using it. And of course, there are actually better or comparable alternatives out there like Jitsi Meet or Whereby.com. 
go ahead and check those out if you want some alternatives and just be careful when you're using zoom i mean you might have to use it depending on who you're using it with if they're making use of it for work or something like that which is definitely a bit of a bummer so you might be out of luck there but perhaps by suggesting these other alternatives you might be able to get more privacy back for yourself anyways guys thanks for checking out this video and i'll see you again on the next one very soon